Magic the Gathering is a brutal game. The whole point is you're pitted against your friends in a life or death battle of wits and magic, where you draw your power from different worlds known as planes. Despite being a game played with buddies that revolves around little pieces of cardboard, the lore of magic is actually incredibly deep, complex, and occasionally really fucking dark. I meet plenty of players who are only into magic because they like the strategy, or because they saw a sexy elf or a kick-ass looking dragon, got hooked, and never looked any further into the stories. But for me, the best parts of magic are the intense stories and intricate lore that gives life to the cards we play. For those of you who know nothing about magic, these stories can serve as a jumping off point to dive into. For those who already play, you might be surprised to learn just how fucking dark some of the lore behind your favorite characters really is. The first set of Magic cards was released in 1993, and with several new sets being released each year, along with novels, comics, short stories published online, and the flavor text on the cards themselves, the lore has grown deeper and wider each year. I've searched through these resources to present to you the four darkest stories lurking within Magic the Gathering. Number 1. Urza and the Phyrexians No, it's not the name of an indie band you've never heard of. It's the first stop on our journey through the brutality of MTG lore. Urza was one of the first characters to capture the attention of MTG players, and his story, spanning tons of card sets, has had far-reaching effects on the Magic multiverse. I've distilled his saga into the most brutal, messed up tale of revenge gone wrong you've ever heard. Urza was a wizard, born into nobility and hungry for power, just like his brother Mishra. The two boys grew and laughed and frolicked. Just kidding, they started a devastating war against each other which decimated their plane, gave rise to beings like this monstrosity, and ended with Urza's discovery that his brother had been turned into a being of oil, machinery, and evil by a scourge of artificial life forms known as the Phyrexians. Phyrexians themselves are the most brutal race in the MTG multiverse. Beings of metal and necrotic tissue, their beliefs are simple. All life is an abomination, and only machines created by machines are perfect and worthy of existence. Their home plane of Phyrexia is a hellscape of nine concentric spheres, filled with birthing pods, unspeakable horrors, and one boiling, glistening sea of oil, even a drop of which spreads the mind-numbing corruption of the Phyrexian doctrine. After the death of his brother, Urza dedicated his life to the destruction of the Phyrexians, making massive sacrifices, including an entire plane created by angels. Urza's centuries-long battle with the Phyrexians left a wake of blood, betrayal, death, corrupted minds and bodies, and decimated worlds, all in the name of conquering this foe which has destroyed his family and his home! That's brutal enough in and of itself. But the true tragedy of the story is, when Urza finally mounted an assault powerful enough to destroy Phyrexia, he found himself unable to pull the trigger. His eon-spanning obsession had turned into fascination, and even admiration, and he bowed to Phyrexian rule. What a dick! Number 2. The Tragic Love of Elspeth and Doxos If you thought we were done with the Phyrexians, we're not! The macabre mechanicals went on to conquer and control huge swaths of the multiverse. Their story would continue for a long time in Magic's history. Years after the first introduction of these brutal, techno-magical subjugators, the damage they inflicted would set off a seriously messed up Romeo and Juliet story. Born on a nameless world ruled by Phyrexians, the planeswalker Elspeth was raised in a prison hospital, where she was used as essentially a therapy dog for insane machines. She escaped when her planeswalker spark ignited, and Elspeth, only 13 years old, began stumbling from plane to plane seeking refuge. Through her travels, she befriended Doxos of Miletus, who's best summed up as a sexy Greek warrior guy. Elspeth didn't have an easy time, fighting Phyrexians, seeing friends die at their hands, and fighting the demons of her past. But she found family in Doxos and found purpose when the sun god Heliod chose her to be his champion. They gave her a hope and stability she'd never had, a reason to keep fighting that was greater than hate and anger. Anyways, I think you know this doesn't end happily for her. The very night they admitted their love for each other, Elspeth was tricked into murdering Daxos. An evil satyr duped her into seeing him as a Phyrexian torturer, and she attacked and killed the only man she had ever loved. Because of her deeds, the sun god Heliod became convinced that Elspeth was a traitor. She'd lost everything, burdened with a broken heart, and being haunted by the god she had devoted herself to. Long story short, Elspeth made her way to the underworld to take revenge on the evil satyr, with Heliod hot on her trail. 
She killed the trickster, but just as everything looked like it would turn out okay, Heliod ran her through with her own blade. At the last minute, in a bargain with the ruler of the underworld, she exchanged her soul for Doxus's soul. But Elspeth should have known better than to bargain with a god. In a final tragic twist, Doxos was brought back as a faceless zombie. Now he roams the world endlessly searching for Elspeth, not knowing that she's eternally trapped in the underworld and that they can never be reunited. Fuck! Number three, Liliana's family drama. Liliana Vess, one of Magic's most famous or infamous characters. She's appeared on tons of cards and has been featured heavily in the recent story arcs. This fappable queen of the dead has flip-flopped from being a villain to a hero and back again. And that all stems from a gruesome and tragic backstory darker than the empty eye sockets of the zombie hordes she commands. Though now a sexy necromancer and planeswalker, she was once a young girl with a promising future, studying diligently to be a healer, hoping to cure wounds and ailments and make the world a better place. All that changed the day enemy forces tore down upon her family's lands. Her brother Jasu had been injured in the fight. As he lay dying, Liliana desperately searched the woods for a certain root which could heal him, only to find the spot where they grew had been burned by the skin witches of the invading troops. Yeah, that's right, I said skin witches. They're witches who strip the skin right off you and offer it to their demon lord. Brutal! Anyways, a mysterious man appeared to Liliana, encouraging her to release the dormant power within, the power of a badass necromancer. She unleashed her power, bringing the shriveled roots back to life. But when she fed her beloved brother the potion she'd made from them, things didn't turn out the way she'd hoped. Liliana watched Jasu shrivel and turn gray before her eyes. His soul lived and animated his body, but it was trapped in a void of agony. Gah! You know, regular family stuff. Jasu, damned for eternity and blaming Liliana, went on a rampage and was about to kill Liliana when she used her latent necromancy to summon an army of corpses to swarm over him. <sighs> Liliana soon left her plane and went on to other dark adventures, but her greatest regret, the secret shame that she held for centuries, was that she had damned her brother to unspeakable agony, then had him killed at the hands of the zombies she'd summoned. Too bad they don't have therapists for planeswalkers, because... <laughs> That's a lot to deal with. But the story gets even darker. Centuries later, Liliana would return to her home in an attempt to save it from an even greater evil, only to find that Jasu hadn't been torn to pieces. He'd become a living horror. Her beloved brother had become a powerful lich, leading unholy troops to terrorize and destroy everything that had once been beautiful and good in their world. So she had to kill him all over again. Wow! Number four, Emrakul's influence. Our final story centers not on a person, but on an entire plane. The world of Innistrad was first introduced to Magic fans in 2011, and it's always been a scary place. It's a gothic horror plane full of zombies, vampires, werewolves, and stitched together monsters. But the terrors were mostly kept at bay by the plane's guardian, Avacyn, and her army of angels, as well as some noble humans. But with the introduction of the Shadows Over Innistrad card set in 2016, this weird plane started to get even weirder. Unbeknownst to the people there, the ancient, multi-dimensional horror known as Emrakul was exerting her influence over all of Innistrad. The murderous things haunting the woods became even more violent. People started disappearing, and strange, twisted monoliths began appearing and exerting a troubling power over the formerly sane citizens and formerly righteous angels. Slowly, monsters became even more horrible. Archangel Avacyn became wholly corrupted and started just straight up slaughtering those she was created to protect. Fun stuff! Most brutal and horrifying of all, the people of Innistrad began to lose their minds. What started as whispers in the night grew to full-blown paranoia, escalating into mind-rending insanity. And as their minds became corrupted, their bodies began to change as well. That's a big no thank you on the calamari arms. The plane was eventually saved by the MTG version of the Avengers, but this story stands out as one of the most brutal and tentacly times in Magic's history. Now that I've read this list out loud, I don't know what it says about me that this is my favorite game. Anyways, <clears throat> thanks for watching. 
Hey Darkly viewers, it's Tony here to tell you about the best show on this side of the galaxy, Troopers, which is now available to stream on Dropout. Do you like lasers and space and, you know, more lasers? Then check out this great series. If you go to Dropout, you can get a free week trial. You can start putting those lasers right into your eyes. Uh, it's not surgically advisable, but it's entertainment advisable. You have my guarantee.